everyone. Today we have the Depuratore Italiano Nano Filtration System from Sambo Creek. This one is made in Italy and it is our best nano filtration system thus far. This valve right here would be the best place to drain the concentrate from your system. And the system can be fed two ways. Using this valve right here, which is connected to the tank, or through this valve right here, which will be connected to whatever process you have. And always, when the valves are like this, they're closed, and we're in. When they're aligned with a the pipe, they're open, in case you didn't know that, but... And they are beautiful valve valves. So, let's follow the pipes and see where they lead us to. So you go from your inlet into this device right here. And this is a strainer. So if for some reason there are any kind of metal shards or large particles that could potentially damage your pump, they would fall into this device right here and you unscrew this piece here and clean it out. You should check this out periodically. Again, this is just a safety device. This is not a primary means of filtration. From this pipe, we are going into this device back here. This device here is a pressure sensor. And so what this device does is it controls your pump. The pump needs to have a minimum pressure coming into it so that it operates correctly. And so if there was an anomaly, you see a little blue wire there. And what that does is it controls your pump. So it's a safety feature. And it'll stop the pump if there were some operational anomaly. Also, because this is a diaphragm pump, it is subject to pulsations. So as a safety feature, we have flexible tubing connected to it. And you can see wonderful craftsmanship of my guys in Italy. But this is just a safety feature, right? To remove any sort of vibration from the system, we're using flexible hoses. Another item we have as a safety feature is this round thing here, this is called a pulsation damper. And what that does is it removes some of the fluctuations that come out of the pump. This pump is a diaphragm pump, but it has several little diaphragms in there. So the actual movement of the fluid, the pulsation is very minimal, but we just add an extra damper there just to remove any residual pulsations because these membranes will just operate better and they will last longer with this sort of safety feature. So these are the kind of little things that we go above and beyond for our customers so you can have the best product possible. And that little thing right there is just an oil tank. Of course, we use food grade oil, but you can choose whatever you want. There's several options, but let's continue with the process flow. So the bottom is the pump inlet. The top is the outlet. And we can follow that braided hose down to the back. I don't know if you can see that, but so then you have a pressure sensor down there. And so this will let you monitor to see if there's any anomalies in pressure for some reason or another. There may be not enough pressure or too much pressure, but it allows you to have a before and after your membranes. So if you continue on the piping, things start to get interesting. Right. So we are from coming in from the pump through this pipe right here. Okay. So you can choose to drain the entire system by opening this valve here. And like I said before, it goes to the drains. And as you can see, we have these DIN fittings everywhere. And so it makes it really easy just to tear everything apart without any complex tools or anything like that. And these are, these are great fittings that'll make life easier for you. And if you notice, everything is welded where it needs to be welded. Some of these uh, compression fittings tend to leak. And as you remove them over time, they're not reliable. So when we can weld, we weld. And where we need pressure or disconnectable fittings, we have the appropriate fitting for you. But anyways, so this is our drain right here. So you can choose to drain the entire system, you know, close this valve, close this valve, open this valve, and then the pump will just drain everything out. Right, perfect. But if we're not gonna drain it, we're gonna operate normally, there's a few options. So this valve right here takes you to your 
heat exchanger. So if you don't have a chilled uh, tank, what you may want to do is simply use the included heat exchanger to do the entire chilling process. That's perfectly fine. Or you can bypass it and just use whatever you have in your lab. So let me show you. So you see this pipe comes up here. Boom. It comes in here and it goes into your heat exchanger, which is this thing right here. Kind of awkward where we are, and I'm sorry about that, but I just wanted to show you guys, we're so excited about this, that I wanted to show you how awesome this device is. But that's our heat exchanger. It'll connect right there to your chiller. Very nice tube and tube heat exchanger. It's not gonna get clogged. It's got plenty of surface area. And of course, we have a little pressure gauge up here Again, just so you can monitor what's going on. For normal operation, of course, this would be open and this would go into the membranes. So there are four membranes in series, so you're going to go from number one to number two to number three to number four in series. So this filters a little bit, it goes to the other end, feeds on the opposite side of this housing, and then comes out of here, into the next one, and so on and so forth, until it comes out here. And so you have a pressure gauge. So when you're setting your pressure, you're going to look at this gauge. And so this lever right here, this valve right here is what controls the pressure. So you tighten this and you watch your gauge so you can see what is the operating pressure that you are at. Very simple to tighten and loosen. And you make micro adjustments and you watch the pressure go up. But anyways, so then after this valve, we're no longer under pressure. So everything before this valve is pressurized and everything after is not. So here's another valve in case you're going to bypass the membranes to just use the heat exchanger. And you close this valve, right? And so if you notice, the heat exchanger is not a pressure device because we are after the pressurized portion of the system. However, just look at the Italian craftsmanship Look at all these welds, they're just so beautiful. This device is just amazingly well built. Yeah, so we discussed where you feed from, but now let's discuss where you collect your permeate and your concentrate from. So there's a couple ways to do that. These two pipes here is one way to do it. You can use this tank to recirculate your fluid if you're going to be washing the system with water or what, usually you'll use this tank because it's safe to use with water to rinse out your membranes or when you're conditioning your membranes, you can do that. But you notice you can feed into this tank and so you have a three-way valve, right? That you can see right now it's set to drain into this tank. Like I said, when you're conditioning the membranes, doing whatever kind of testing, definitely it goes into here or you can draw and connect off of here it's really up to you and if we follow the piping you'll see that this one to the left is your permeate whatever permeates through the membranes and the one on the right this one over here is your concentrate so let's see that again permeate concentrate permeate concentrate and if you notice, those two pipes drain into your tank. Oh, but what is that thing down there, you might ask? Okay, so this is a pressure relief valve. So this valve right here will open and let fluid from the pump out and recirculate back to the pump. Therefore, the fluid would bypass the membranes. So if there's ever a clog in the membranes, that valve right there will just completely bypass the membranes. And so it's just another safety feature that we have for you guys, just so you have great products in the safest environment possible. And also because the membranes are pricey, you want to make sure that you treat them well so they last a really long time. As far as the plumbing here, there's a couple things to discuss. So of course we have side glass, so you can really see what's coming out from your concentrate and from your permeate. So you have your permeate side glass and you have your concentrate side glass. So just a quick note about cleaning. This is something I haven't seen in other systems. 
So these are push to connect fittings. So you would connect tubing into, into these, nitrogen or other inert gas to flush out your system. So you connect tubing here, put air there, open these. And so air comes into your system and it'll help flush all of your tubing so you reclaim all of your liquid from the system. It'll make draining it so much easier and purging your system from all of your micella or solvent or whatever you got going on. Just so much easier. But that's what those are for. And you have a pressure gauge to see what the pressure is at for your permeate. Usually you shouldn't see any pressure on your permeate, of course, but if there was an abnormal operation of the system, you would be able to identify that there. And so the permeate, whatever makes it through the membranes, would come out of here and your concentrate would come out of here. And so you have four permeates, one, two, three, four. And like I said, you can follow this tube all the way to the other end to the tank and you can draw off of there or you can draw off of here for draining it's probably best to use this because it, since it is a vertical tube draining it would be challenging if we didn't have this sort of setup but you can just drain from here but optionally which we don't recommend is for you to draw your permeate from that tube right there So to install your membranes, you're going to remove this and this and pull out this cap. And if you notice, these two are connected. So you're forced to remove this, 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 and this. And so you're going to install the membranes. The membranes usually come with a gasket, a black gasket on one and only. So the membranes would go in this way with the black gasket towards the direction of flow. So they would go in that way and the gasket would be on housing number one on the bottom. On housing number two, the gasket would be on the other end. So you would want to insert number two from the opposite end. Number three, the gasket would be on this side. Number four, the gasket would be on the other side. And yes, it could be a little cumbersome to uninstall these things, but they're not made to be uninstalled in a daily basis. So it's just once and you're done. So here we have sample valves. So if you're doing any kind of testing or quality control, you have conveniently placed valves that are after the high pressure line. So you can just connect a little hose here or put a beaker directly here and just quickly take a sample of the concentrate and the permeate. And you have flow meters here so you can see what your flow rate is on both of these lines. So this part here is just a control box. This box would sit outside of the C1D1 environment. So this is just your main on off simple like that. And of course it has plenty of hoses. So you can connect to the actual skid with the membranes. Of course you need a qualified electrician that has experience with explosion proof installations and environments so they can connect this correctly but all of the wire that you need is included, plenty of length to get you connected to your booth and to your electrical outlet. This particular system is 230 volts, single phase, 60 Hertz version of our skid. And we can do 233 phase. We can do 400 and change three phase. As long as you tell us in advance, we can get that accomplished for you. So just let us know in advance and we'll make it happen. This particular system is monophase. So you can see there's only three wires, of course. This is 230 volts, volts monophase. So depending on your installation, this is basically what your electrician has to deal with, right? Connecting this to your power supply. And that'll depend on the system that you configure, but it just gives you an idea of like, what does the electrical outlet look like? There is no outlet. You kind of have to do that yourself, but this black wire is what comes into the actual skid itself and everything is beautifully done, grounded, 
shielded, professionally installed, intrinsically safe wiring. We love you guys. We take care of you guys. Offering you the safest equipment, the highest quality, and this install is just incredibly well done well labeled what a beautiful install this is i hope you guys agree last but not least we have your controls and these are on these will be inside your booth so you have an e-stop of course you push the e-stop and everything stops it's a safety feature to reset it you just turn it and pops out and you're good to run again and so you've got the pump speed here so you control the pump with this level right there is a little potentiometer it's really simple you just turn it clockwise to go faster counterclockwise to go slower typically you want to run as fast as possible so the cross flow on the membranes is effective and you prevent the membranes from clogging or uh, building up or anything like that from fouling is a technical term and then you have here a selector and what is manual and what is automatic so when we're running at manual the potentiometer is regulated manually so you have to slowly speed up and slow down the system when you're doing this in auto mode it's a safety feature another one of those safety features that we got going on so the pump will ramp up slowly when you start it because if you start the pump really fast it could actually potentially cause some damage to the pump depending on the operating conditions that's around. So the pump manufacturer recommends a certain ramp up rate and so to remove user error we have a very simple selector with a potentiometer that will avoid any kind of conflicts and then this is the off position and that's it guys.